Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to continue reading out the book of Matthew. We'll be reading chapter 10, verses 1 through verse 42. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my life, for my beautiful wife, Teresa, and for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us. I give you thanks for your prayer warriors, and all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask in your name. May there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. And when we hear that verse, may the Holy Spirit stir up something inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses to our lives. In God the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus sends out the 12 disciples, verse 1. He called his 12 disciples to him. And gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphalus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the journey or extra tunic or sandals or a staff for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for someone for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth. It will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Jesus 
prepares the disciples for persecution. Verse 17. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of those little ones, 
because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth. He will certainly not lose his reward. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break down a few of these verses together. Chapter 10, verse 1, reads the following. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Jesus called his 12 disciples. He didn't draft them, force them, or ask them to volunteer. He chose them to serve him in a special way. Christ calls us today. He doesn't twist our arms and make us do something we don't want to do. We can choose to join him or remain behind. When Christ calls you to follow him, how do you respond? Sometimes, there's been times when he has called me and I've been slow to respond to him. Other times, he has called me and I've listened to him. I think that is something that sometimes I struggle with. Sometimes uh, I want to do what Felix wants to do, whatever I want to do. And that is a problem. I think every day we all should pray for God to give us the strength to follow his will and not our own will. Verse 2 to 4 reads the following. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The list of Jesus' twelve disciples doesn't give us many details, probably because there weren't many impressive details to tell. Jesus called people from all walks of life, fishermen, political activists, tax collectors. He called common people and uncommon leaders, rich and poor, educated and uneducated. Today, many people think only certain people are fit to follow Christ, but this was not the attitude of the master himself. God can use anyone, no matter how in, insignificant he or she appears. When you feel small and useless, remember that God uses ordinary people to do his extraordinary work. Amen, brothers and sisters. Verse 3. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Bartholomew is probably another name for Nathaniel, whom we will meet in John chapter 1, verses 45 through 51. Thaddeus is also known as Judas, son of James. The disciples are also listed in Mark chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, Luke chapter 6, verses 14 through 16, 
in Acts chapter 1, verse 13. Verse 4, brothers and sisters. Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. Simon the Zealot may have been a member of the Zealots, a radical political party working for a violent overthrow of Roman rule in Israel. Verses 5 and 6 reads, These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Why didn't Jesus send the disciples to the Gentiles or the Samaritans? A Gentile is anyone who is not a Jew. The Samaritans were a race that resulted from intermarriage between Jews and Gentiles after the Old Testament captivities. As you can see in 2 Kings verse, chapter 17, verse 24. Jesus asked his disciples to go only to the Jews because he came first to the Jews. As you read in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, God chose them to tell the rest of the world about him. Jewish disciples and apostles preached the gospel of the risen Christ all around the Roman Empire, and soon Gentiles were pouring into the church. The Bible clearly teaches that God's message of salvation is for all people, regardless of race, sex, or national origin. For more verses that support this, you can read Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6, Isaiah chapter 56, verses 3 to 7, Malachi chapter 1, verse 11, Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, Romans chapter 3, verses 29 and 30, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Verse 7, brothers and sisters. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. The Jews were waiting for the Messiah to usher in his kingdom. They hoped for a political and military kingdom that would free them from Roman rule and bring back the days of glory under David and Solomon. But Jesus was talking about a spiritual kingdom. The gospel today is that the kingdom is still near. Jesus the Messiah has already begun his kingdom on earth in the hearts of his followers. One day the kingdom will be fully realized. Then evil will be destroyed and all people will live in peace with one another. Verse 8, brothers and sisters. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Jesus gave the disciples a principle to guide their actions as they ministered to others. Freely you have received, freely give. Because God has showered us with his blessing, we should give generously to others of our time, love, and possessions. Verse 10, brothers and sisters. Take no bag for the journey, or extra tunic, or sandals, or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Jesus said that those who minister are to be cared for. That the disciples could expect food and shelter in return for their spiritual service they provided. Who ministers to you? Make sure you take care of the pastors, missionaries, and teachers who serve God by serving you. 
You can read more about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 and 10, and 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Mark's account in chapter 6, verse 8, says to take a staff, walking stick, and Matthew and Luke, in chapter 9, verse 3, say not to. Jesus may have meant that they were not to take an extra pair of sandals, staff, and bag. In any case, the principle was that they were to go out ready for duty and travel, unencumbered by excess of material goods. Verse 14, brothers and sisters. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that town or home. Why did Jesus tell his disciples to shake the dust off their feet if a city or home didn't welcome them? When leaving Gentile cities, pious Jews often shook the dust from their feet to show their separation from Gentile practices. If the disciples shook the dust off a Jewish town from their feet, it would show their separation from the Jews who rejected their Messiah. This gesture was to show the people that they were making a wrong choice, that the opportunity to choose Christ might not present itself again. Are you receptive to teaching from God? If you ignore the Spirit's prompting, you may not get another chance. You know, brothers and sisters, tomorrow is never promised to any one of us. Any one of us can go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow to live another day. But any one of us could go to sleep tonight and tonight could be our last night. We should be living every day as if it is our last day. We should be loving and forgiving every single person in our life and sharing with every single person in our life the only news and the only truth that really has any worth. And that is Jesus Christ. That Jesus died for each and every one of us. And that he rose on the third day. That Jesus conquered death and sin. And that through his death, he took the punishment of our sins. That if we repent from our sins, he will forgive us. That if we believe and have faith and hope in him and follow him, we will be his children. We are his children. Every day we should be a disciple for Jesus. Because we don't know if tomorrow's promised. We should be storing up our treasures in heaven. Because our treasures here on earth will only last while we breathe. So are you receptive to the teaching from God? This should be a yes from all of us. And if it's a no, we need to change some things so that we are receptive. Because we never know. Today might be our last chance. Amen, brothers and sisters. Verse 15. I tell you the truth. 
it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by fire from heaven because of their wickedness. We could read about this in Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 and 25. Those who reject the gospel, when they hear it, will be worse off than the wicked people of those destroyed cities who never heard the gospel at all. Verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. The opposition of the Pharisees would be like ravaging wolves. The disciples' only hope would be to look to their shepherd for protection. We may face similar hostility. Like to the, the disciples, we are not to be sheep-like in our attitude, but sensible and prudent. We are not to be gullible pawns, but neither are we to be deceitful connivers. We must find a balance between wisdom and vulnerability to accomplish God's work. Verses 17 and 18 reads, Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. Later, the disciples experienced these hardships, as you read in Acts chapter 5, verse 40, and Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Not only from without governments and courts, but also from within friends and family. Living for God often brings on persecution, but with it comes the opportunity to tell the good news of salvation. In times of persecution, we can be confident because Jesus has overcome the world, as you read in John chapter 16, verse 33. And those who stand firm to the end will be saved, as you read in, in chapter 10, verse 22. Verses 19 and 20 reads, But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Jesus told the disciples that when arrested for preaching the gospel, they should not worry about what to say in their defense. God's Spirit would speak through them. This promise was fulfilled in Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 14, and elsewhere. Some mistakenly think that this means we don't have to prepare to present the gospel because God will take care of everything. Scripture teaches, however, that we are to make careful that we are to make carefully prepared, thoughtful statements. As you read in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, Jesus is not telling us to stop preparing, but to stop worrying. Verse 22 reads the following. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Standing firm to the end is not a way to be saved, but the evidence that a person is really committed to Jesus. Persistence is not a means to earn salvation. It is the byproduct of a truly devoted life to King Jesus. Chapter 23. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Christ warned the disciples against premature martyrdom. 
They were to leave before the persecution got too great. We have plenty of work to do and many people to reach. Our work won't be finished until Christ returns. And only after he returns will the whole world realize his true identity. As you read in chapter 24, verse 14, and, and Romans chapter 14, verse 9 through 12. Verse 25 reads, It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? Beelzebub was also known as the Lord of the Flies and the prince of demons. The Pharisees accused Jesus of using Beelzebub's power to drive demons out in chapter 12, verse 24. Good is sometimes labeled evil. If Jesus, who is perfect, was called evil, his followers should expect that similar accusations will be directed at them. But those who stand firm will be vindicated, as we read in, in, in chapter 10, verse 22. Verses 29 through 31 reads the following. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even... The very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Jesus said that God is aware of everything that happens even to sparrows. And you are far more valuable to him than they are. You are so valuable that God sent his only son to die for you. As we read in John chapter 3 verse 16. Because... God places such value on you, you need never fear personal threats or difficult trials. These can't shake God's love or dislodge his spirit from within you. Amen. But this doesn't mean that God will take away all of your troubles. As we, as we see in chapter 10, verse 16. The real test of value is how well something holds up under the wear, tear, and abuse of everyday life. Those who stand up for Christ in spite of their troubles truly have lasting value and will receive great rewards. As we, as we read in chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Verse 34 reads, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Jesus did not come to bring the kind of peace that glosses over deep differences just for the sake of superficial harmony. Conflict and disagreement will arise between those who choose to follow Christ and those who don't. Yet, we can look forward to the day when all conflict will be resolved. Verses 34 through 39 reads the following. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Christian Commitment may separate friends and loved ones. In saying this, Jesus was not encouraging disobedience to parents or conflict at home. Rather, he was showing 
that his presence demands a decision. Because some will follow Christ and some won't. Conflict will be inevitably to arise. As we take our cross and follow him, our different values, morals, goals, and purposes will set us apart from others. Don't neglect your family, but remember that your commitment to God is even more important than they are. God should be your first priority. And brothers and sisters, if we keep God first in our lives, we are going to take care of what he's given us. Our spouses, our children, uh, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors. If we always keep God first and love him with all of our mind, heart, body, strength, soul, and love our neighbors as ourselves, we're going to follow his commandments. We're going to serve others as Jesus served us. Keeping God first will help you love, forgive, and serve everyone that he puts in your life. Verse 37. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Christ calls us to a higher mission than to find comfort and tranquility in this life. Love of a family is a law of God, but even this love can be self-serving and used as an excuse not to serve God or to do his work. Verse 38 reads, and whoever does not take and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. To take our cross and follow Jesus means to be willing to publicly identify with him, to experience almost certain opposition and to be committed to face even suffering and death for his sake. To take our cross and follow Jesus means to be willing to publicly identify with him, to experience almost certain opposition, and to be committed to face even suffering and death for his sake. Verse 39. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This verse is a positive and negative statement of the same truth. Clinging to this life may cause us to forfeit the best from Christ in this world and in the next. The more we love this life's rewards, like leisure, power, popularity, financial security, the more we will discover how empty they really are. The best way to enjoy life, therefore, is to loosen our greedy grasp on earthly rewards so that we can be free to follow Christ. In doing so, we will inherit eternal life and begin at once to experience the benefits of of following Christ. Amen. And verse 42, brothers and sisters. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. How much we love God can be measured by how well we treat others. Jesus' example of giving a cup of cold water to a thirsty child is a good model of unselfish service. A child usually can't and won't return a favor. God notices every good deed we do or don't do as if he were the one receiving it. 
Is there something unselfish you can do for someone else today? Although no one else may see you, God will notice. See, brother, it doesn't matter what we think about ourselves or what somebody else thinks about ourselves. It only matters what God thinks about us. And it doesn't matter what we look like on the outside because in the end, God knows who we are on the inside. So we should live life as an open book. And if we're not ready to show what our inside looks like to the world, well, we should pray for God to change it, to change us from the inside out so that we can live like an open book and open up what we look like on the inside. Because for some people who do not believe in him, we may be the closest that someone may see to the love of Christ. So if there's something inside of us that we wouldn't want to show to the world, let's pray to God to remove that. Because we should be a walking testimony. We should be uh, uh, disciples, walking disciples. We should be uh, the light and love and forgiveness of Jesus so that we can point the lost back to him. Amen, brothers and sisters. Great reading tonight. Matthew 10 is a chapter that, that I have read. Uh, so for me, it, it was a, a great reminder as always. And for those of you who, who have not read Matthew uh, chapter 10, and this was your first time, I hope that, uh, that you took away some key points uh, from tonight's reading. It's always a blessing to read God's word. And I believe that we should be reading God's word every day. Every day that God gives us life, we should be reading, studying his holy scriptures and applying it to our lives. Because we never know, today may be the last day. Today may be our last day. Do you want to live your last day not preparing yourself for the Lord? If the Lord comes tonight, are you ready to say, I'm, re I'm ready, Lord? We should all be ready. We should all be preparing ourselves for God to come back today, for Christ to come back today. Because it's written in the scripture, he will come like a thief in the night. He's not going to tell us, I'm coming back, uh, uh, you know, next week, next Saturday at, uh, at 7, at 7 p.m. So go ahead and do what you want uh, uh, during the week. But on Saturday, make sure you get ready. That's not the way it, it's, it works, brothers and sisters. That's why we need to prepare ourselves daily. Daily, we, we need to, to, to repent. Daily, we, we need to resist temptation. Daily, uh, 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 we need to kill our flesh. Daily, we need to seek our Father. Daily, we need to love and forgive and show others the love of Christ. Daily, we should be leading our spouses, our children, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors. We should be leading them back to the only one who can save us. And his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua. Daily, we should be living a living testimony that points back to the king, our king, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Great reading, brothers and sisters. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to give you thanks. I want to give you honor. I want to give you glory. I want to thank you for tonight's reading. I want to give you thanks for, for speaking to us every day through your holy scriptures. I want to give you thanks for, for putting the, the desire inside of us to, to read your scriptures, to study your scriptures, and the strength to apply your scriptures. I want to give you thanks for choosing us, Lord. I want to give you thanks for loving us, for forgiving us, for dying for us. Lord Jesus, I, I just ask that you forgive us all for our sins. That you give us all a discerning heart. That you fill us all with your Holy Spirit. That any of us uh, who, who's suffering of, of any sickness or, or diseases or anything that causes us pain, I ask that you heal us. I ask that, that you remove any sinful desires, any sinful thoughts. Any, I ask that you remove anything that's not of you. That you just replace it with, with your Holy Spirit, with thoughts and, and, and fruits and gifts of you, Lord. I ask for, for healing upon us who are sick and our loved ones who are sick. I ask that you break chains of addiction in us, whether the addiction is to uh, drugs, alcohol, smoking, lust, money, power, whatever our addiction is. I ask that you break those chains. I ask that you break chains of, of, of sin. If we are, are, are a slave to any sin, if we're chained to any sin, I ask that you break that chain in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I ask that if we choose to sin, that, that, the, that the Holy Spirit uh, inside of us makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from those sins. I ask that you just bless, heal, and protect my wife and children and and all of my brothers and sisters and, and all of your children, Lord. You know who we are. And I ask that for those that are out there who, who, who still do not accept you, who still reject you, Lord, that that you send one of us to plant that seed, that seed of, of the gospel, that, that, that seed of Jesus, that seed of hope in them, and that the Holy Spirit makes that seed grow. I just ask that you bless, heal, and protect all of our pastors, all the different ministries out there. And you know... Uh, you know what we need, Lord, before we even know ourselves. I just ask that your will be done in our lives. If there's a door that we want to walk through that uh, we shouldn't walk through, don't let us go through it, Lord. And if there's a, the, a door that, that, that uh, you want us to go through, pre prepare us to go through that door. Lead us. Guide us to it. So that when you open that door, we, we are ready to, to walk through it. I just ask all these things in, in the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also in the prayer that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I love you guys. I hope that uh, 
that you took some some key things away from tonight's reading. And I hope that uh, you realize that tomorrow is never promised. So every day we need to, to prepare ourselves as if Christ is coming back tonight. And he may come back tonight and he may come back in 10,000 years from, from today. I don't know and nobody knows when he's coming back. If anybody tells you, oh, we know uh, 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 the date and time that God's coming back, Jesus is returned, they're, they're lying to you. They're trying to deceive you. Why do I say that? Because his Bible, his word tells us so. So we don't, we don't know when he's coming back. But we need to be ready. I need to be ready. I need to have my family ready, my wife ready, my children ready, my loved ones ready. We need to do the same. I love you, Jesus. And I thank you for, for loving us. I thank you for everything you've done for us. And I love you, brothers and sisters. Good night. And we'll continue reading together. God bless you.